Hey everyone and welcome to this video. Now in this video I will share with you guys a 1 minute scalping or trading strategy you can use on basically any cryptocurrency pair available. However in this tutorial I will be using the BTC slash USDT pair and with all of that being said let's get right into it. Now in the first part of this video I will show you how to install the indicators and how to set them up using the right settings. After that I will show you the outcomes and the trades and at the end of this video I will show you the results of using this trading strategy. So the first thing you want to do is to go over to tradingview.com and click on indicators. Now you want to look for super trend and then you want to go over to the first one with over 28,000 installs. Now that you've installed the super trend indicator, once again you want to go over to indicators and now you need to search for the EMA ribbon. And then you want to click on this one, say encrypt and it's close to 3000 downloads or installs as of right now. And now we'll go ahead and give the indicators the right settings. So first off, go over to Supertrend and click on these settings. Now you want to go over to Input and go over to the ATR multiplier. You want to change the 3 to 5 and the ATR period is going to be 22. And you can then click on OK. And now you want to go over to the EMA ribbon. Once again, click on Settings. And then you want to disable all of them except for 2 and it doesn't matter which 2. Then just go over to Input and change the first one to 50 and the second one to 200 and then you can click on OK. And now let's get right into the second part of this video. And now that you've set up the indicators, let's get right into the trading strategy. So now that you know the strategy we'll be using in this video and how to set up the indicators, I will show you the results. I will also give you some conditions, so kind of some additional rules on when and when not to enter your trades. Now with all of that being said, let's get right into the results. Right here the sell signal or the short signal is given, one candle later you will open up your trade and like we've talked about before the stop loss is going to be a little bit above the 200 EMA which in this case is right here and then your risk reward ratio is going to be 1.8 so that's going to be right here and you can see that the first trade is a win. Now when you go on to the right a little bit you'll see a dump and that's the first condition to the trading strategy in this video you're not going to enter dumps. Like as you guys can see, in literally one minute, you dumped half a percent, which is just too much. And if that happens, it's pretty likely that the price is going to come back up. So that's why you're not going to enter this trade. You can also see that the stochastic RSI is in the oversold territory, which implies that the price will go back up again. However, the stochastic RSI is not actually part of this strategy, but you can always use it to confirm your trades. Now when you go on further to the right, you'll see the next trade. The buy signal is given and you are actually above the EMAs. Please be aware that even if there's a wick touching the EMA on the second candle, you're not going to enter into the trades. For example, right here. You can see that the sell signal is given and one week later you're actually outside the EMA range. However, the wick touches the 200 EMA, so you're not going to enter this short position. So here's another trade, you actually won once again. So the buy signal is given, you're above the 200 EMA which means that you can enter your trade. And now like I said, you're going to place your stop loss a little bit above or below the 200 EMA. If you're placing a long order, you should set your stop loss below the 200 EMA. And if you're trying to set up a short order, you should have your stop loss above the 200 EMA. So now you're going to have it below the 200 EMA. The take profit is going to be 1.8 times the risk. And once again, that's a winning trade. And I see that I missed a trade right here, so we're going to set it up live. You're below the 200 EMA when the sell signal is given. The second candle does not touch the 200 EMA, which means that you're going to set your stop loss right here. I'm not going to set up the RR because it's a loss. So right now we've got two wins and one loss. Right here you can see the next trade. The stop loss is going to be above the 200 EMA and the take profit is going to be 1.8. Once again a winning trade. Right here there's a loss and right here is another win. Right here there's a buy signal given, however you're still in the EMA ranging zone and you're actually touching the 200 EMA as well. So you're not going to enter that trade. There's a sell signal given, you're not touching the 200 EMA, so you're going to enter the trade with the RR of 1.8 and you actually ended up having a profit. Now in this case the reason I did not set my stop loss on the 200 EMA is because you're still really close to the 200 EMA, however if I would have done so it would still have been a win. Now right here you did not enter the trade, even though you would have had a win as you guys can see. The reason for that is because the buy signal is given between the EMAs, 
so it's still in the EMA zone. Now if you still feel like entering these type of trades, that's totally up to you. However, for myself, I won't be doing this. So right here is the buy signal. The second candle is above the 200 EMA. However, you lost no matter how you placed your stop loss. And just two minutes later, there's a sell signal given. You're below the 200 EMAs, so you're going to enter the trade. Now the reason I placed my stop loss right here is because the 200 EMA is still really close. So I've decided to place my stop loss a little bit above the volume right here. However, the strategy would still work if you place your stop loss closer to the 200 EMA and that would still have been a win. Once again, if you like to enter the trades after you've broken out of the EMA zone, which is totally up to you, you would have had a win. However, it does not count for the strategy in this video. And right here, once again, a win. Right here also, you're below the 200 EMA and the 50 EMA. On the second candle, you're going to enter your trade and the stop loss, I decided to place it above the 50 EMA. However, above the 200 EMA, it would still have been a win. Now right here is another loss, and right here is a buy signal. Now if you decided to enter, even though you're still in the EMA zone, you would have had a loss right now. So please be aware that it's not always a win if you're deciding to enter on a breakout. And that's the reason I don't actually enter if the candle touches the EMA zone. Right here is a buy signal, you're above the 200 EMA so you would have entered this. Now if you decided to set your stop loss really close to the 200 EMA, this would have been a profit. However, if you decided to not do that and lower your stop loss, which I most likely would have done, this would be another loss. Right here is another loss. And right here there's a buy signal, you're above the 200 EMA. The second candle also is above the 200 EMA and the 50 EMA. So you're going to enter your trade and unfortunately this was a loss. Then right here is another buy signal, so you're going to enter a long trade. And you can see that you actually ended up having a great profit. About half an hour later, it's once again a 1.8 times profit, so it's a win. Right here the sell signal is given, however you're still in the 250 EMA zone. And I also want to talk about if you want to enter on retests or not. I found that in most cases this would actually have you to have more wins. So you might want to think about entering a trade whenever there's a retest. Now like I talked about before, you could use the stochastic RSI to consider whether or not to enter your trade. And with all of that being said, this right here is another win. Right here is the sell signal. You're below the 50 EMA and the 200 EMA, so you're going to enter on the second candle. The stop loss is going to be a little bit above the 200 EMA, and your RR is once again going to be 1.8, and that's a win. Right here, there's a buy signal given. You're above the 200 EMA, so you're going to enter the trade, and this would have ended up being a loss. And right here is the next buy signal. The second candle is above the 250 EMA, so you're going to enter the trade with an RR of 1.8 which is a win. And this trade is actually quite funny because it's a win in literally three minutes. Now right here there's a sell signal, you're below the EMA zone so you're going to enter the trade. The stop loss will be a little bit above the 200 or 50 EMA, which doesn't really matter where you placed it because it would still have been a win. Right here is another win and right here is the next sell signal. This would have ended up being a loss. And just about 10 minutes later, or 20 minutes later, there's a buy signal, so a long signal. You're not in the EMA zone and there's no wick touching the EMAs at all. So you're going to enter the trade and this would have been another win. Now there's a sell signal right here, however you're between the EMAs, so you're not going to enter the trade. And right here is a buy signal, you're above the EMAs, so this is a win, this is a win. But you would have only joined this if it was a retest, so it's not going to count. Right here is another win. And right here I decided to place the stop loss not on the 200 EMA because you're practically still on it. So right here is the buy signal and on the second candle you're above the 200 EMA and on the second candle you're above the EMAs so you would enter this trade and it's a win. Right here is a pretty big win as well even though you would have joined right here and it would still have been a win. Another win. Now you're not in the 200 EMA zone as of right here so you would have entered this trade and it would have actually ended up being a loss. Another lose right here, another win, another win. Now right here is the sell signal, and on the second candle you're still below the 200 EMA and the 50 EMA, so you would have entered this trade. Now depending on if you set your stop loss on the 50 EMA, you would have made a loss. However, I think most of you guys would have set the stop loss on the 200 EMA, because there's a lot of trading volume going on right here. 
and you'll then see that this trade was actually quite huge and you made a profit. And that's the last trade of this strategy. So these are the results and let's get right into calculating the profits. So we actually ended up winning 25 trades out of the 35 trades we've done in total and then we're gonna multiply this by 100 and this means we had a winning rate of 71.4%. So the win rate is gonna be 71.4%. Now the take profit is 1.8% and the stop loss is 1%. The number of trades, let's say you can do 3 trades a day, which I think is definitely possible. You would have done 90 trades in one month and the leverage, depending on if you're using leverage, would be somewhere between 1 and 10, that's most likely. So let's say 10 for the first example and the exchange is Binance for most of you guys. However, I actually recommend Bybit but more on that later. So we're going to click on run strategy and using this strategy you would be able to make $54,111 in net profit. Now please be aware that if you're going to use Binance you will have to pay $14,000 in fees and if you're using Bybit you will actually get money for placing limit orders. And if you're then going to run this strategy you can see that you're actually going to get $3,000 USD in fees paid. So basically if you're going to use Bybit you'll get paid money for placing limit orders. Now if you want to sign up for Bybit, I'll leave a link in the description down below because I myself also like to use Bybit if I'm gonna trade. However, I do want to say that I think that most of you guys, including myself, don't really expect to make this type of money. Now the reason for that is because you have something called money management and if you're actually like 10x on your money, you will most likely put at least half of that on the side or invest it in a main cryptocurrency for the long term. So please be aware that these type of results are just in theory. However, I do actually believe that this strategy is really powerful. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions at all, make sure to ask me in the comments down below so I can help you out.